Well, the latest one of these tragedies fit, fitted perfectly that all too common depressing, tragic scenario, the killing of ruthless Empire Wall, shy of his second birthday in the Hutt Valley. Three people of increasing uh, interest to the police in a homicide investigation, including the child's mother, another ma- a man not uh, related uh, to ruthless, and another woman. And we wait... And, you know, we can probably all write the story in our heads, can't we? And we know what happened here. Why can't we stop it? Why can't we stop the murder of innocents in our own country? Why can't we intervene and stop this? Well, to search for some answers in this totally unsatisfactory uh, situation, we are joined now uh, by the CEO of a registered charity called Child Matters, it's a trust aimed at providing training, advice and policy regarding child protection, uh, protection issues. It works with professionals, community organisations and families to provide training and resource. Their CEO is Jane Searle. She's a former, um, she started a career as a barrister and solicitor. She joined the New Zealand Police and she worked as a detective on child abuse teams for several uh, years. Jane, uh, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good morning, Sean. Thank you for having me. Um, God, these stories make me sick and they make everyone I know sick because we know what they are before they happen, right? Well, I think the thing that that is most distressing when we read these statistics is that every one of these deaths is preventable. And so that means we need to take a long, hard look at the system around these children. Yeah. Is, is this a new phenomenon, Jane? Can we... Can we look back in the history of this country and was there a time where we didn't kill our kids with such horrible regularity? Has something changed in the way that families are supported or in our society? And I'd call this an epidemic. It really is. Well, it is. Well, if you look at January last year, we lost three children alone in the first three three weeks of January. So when you consider that and that at times we've lost a child every five weeks. Um, But to answer your first question, has it got worse? I would say that it has, but we don't have the statistics to support that because it's so underreported. And for many years it was underreported and the statistics weren't gathered. However, the frontline organisations are telling us they are seeing more, higher levels of violence, um, they have seen more complexity with these cases. And so I would think with the current um, pressures that are on families that this issue is going to get worse. Okay. You cannot blame the killing of a child, though, at the hands of its caregivers and the hands of adults. I'm not going to let people to get away with saying it's because I couldn't pay the grocery bills and I was unemployed. You cannot use economic circumstance to justify barbarism. I agree. So, what, But what we're dealing with is, is New Zealand has high levels of methamphetamine use. And we have ever since... I was in the police when methamphetamine first came to the country and it changed everything drastically. Methamphetamine has had a huge impact on child abuse. Um, drug addiction. Um, the, the, the other pressure... We do know that when we've got other pressures in the mix, such as um, you know, housing, such as drug use, such as untreated mental health issues, we do know that that does increase the risk around children. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, So you say meth is a big part of this, and and I guess the mental degradation that comes with the use of meth, meth, the fact that it fries your neural pathways and makes, uh, and really can, can send people insane, they lose reason. Mm. There's no doubt that methamphetamine is, is, is absolutely played into this issue, as it has in all violence issues in this country. And as I said, it changed the, the social fabric of this country, as it did with many others. So we can't deny that there's a link between that. Um, anyone that's in the police will tell you that they have seen that. Yeah. But, Jane, how do we stop it? I mean, this kid, this kid, Ruthless Empire, and it kind of, I'd say this is just such a classic case, Ruthless Empire had been taken away from his mother, only just been given back to her. Uh, second time she'd lost a child to Oranga Tamariki. <sighs> Why does the system fail someone like this? I mean, the fact they wanted to call him that and couldn't bother getting his birth registered 
when they called him, call him Ruthless Empire Soldier, which is apparently linked to a gang called the Crips, why don't the alarm bells go back off at Oranga Tamariki and you say, I'm sorry, Jane, I'm going to use these terms, and you say to that dropkick meth head mother, you can't be anywhere near your baby ever again. Well, this is the point. The system isn't working. So I, I want to be clear. First of all, I have worked with some amazing social workers from Moranga Tamariki in my career, um, and there's some that are fighting the system every day to do their job. However, Oranga Tamariki gives inconsistent services to areas it isn't adapting to need, and really, it's just a lack of leadership. So we have an organisation that has been identified for years for not meeting the needs. So this organisation started almost 30 years ago after the death of a little girl called Decelia Whitaker. God. The case was just as yeah. horrifying as Ruse. Yeah. Now, this organisation started because it was seen that there was a need to train those working in the area of child protection, train those working with children to see, uh, to ensure they knew how to identify and respond to abuse and how to report. The system at that time wasn't fit for purpose. Almost 30 years later, we're having the exact same conversations. And yet we've had these reports year after year after year, some of them commissioned by Oranga Tamariki and its predecessors. And we're still not implementing what we need to do. We need to get back to basics, which is correct leadership, the right people with the right experience, ensuring a workforce is able to deal with the issues they're dealing with and to assess the risk. So, uh, uh, you know, Jahan Kasnada has just written an article identifying 57 children yeah. since Oranga Tamariki um, uh, came, into, came into being that have died. Yeah, that's Now, right. half of those, he says in that article, half of those were known to Oranga Tamariki or its predecessors, uh, Oranga Tamariki, at some stage. So that is a complete failure of the system. The risk was identified. Why yes. didn't we move on that? And why don't we have the information sharing capacity? So this is, this is really an organisation that hasn't been run the way it needs to be run. I put that down to a lack of leadership and a lack of having the right people and the right job at the top. Yeah. But, but look, I go back, Jane, and, and Grania Moss came in, and, and I know that Bill English was involved in this. They figured out statistically what all the warning signs were when a child, at the moment of a child being born, they could map whether or not that child was at high risk of being abused, right? And they would move proactively. It was almost like a future crime. But that approach was basically abandoned because it wasn't politically correct and it wasn't kind of ethnically or racially correct, right? Well, I... Uh I think that what we also need to put as when we're assessing risk is we need to make sure that we have the resource on the ground. And that's the other thing that, I, that was missed, mm. I think, even at that time. You, you can have all the information that you need, and I believe that we need better information sharing. It's been identified in reports. Even in the last few years, it's been identified in reports and reviews that the, the six main government agencies need to share the information better. However, if you do not have social workers who have workloads that mean they're able to do their job and have the right training to do their job, and if you do not have community organisations who are funded to support them, then the system will fail. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you call yeah. the organisation. I'm sorry. I'm going to call it like I see it, to be honest, Jane. I think we have a rangatamariki which is more interested in its maurification and providing jobs for the whanau and not offending uh, people on grounds of race than actually doing its bloody job. Well, I think you've got an organisation that has had too much political agenda put onto it, and so its workers then have to work within these You're policies not and impact on them. You're not disagreeing. No, I, I, I think I'm, I'm saying that, that politically there's been swifts, uh, swings and shifts in that organisation, and those frontline workers, who some of them who are doing an excellent job, are trying desperately to do it when they're having these policy changes telling them we now must do it this way, do it that way. Yeah. Good social work has never changed. Good social work is about assessing risk. It is about meeting the needs of the child first. It is about working with the family and understanding what's going on. We need to get back to the basics and not let this issue get politicised.